What's up guys, my name is Mark and I think today's the day. I think I've, I've waited long enough. It's finally time to go shoot some film. Expired film. Want to come? So a big question you may be asking yourself in this world of digital photography is why? Why shoot film? This video is really just the first step of a bigger journey, but seeing as I have everything I need, I thought this would be a great opportunity to do a little bit of a creative experiment. I'm kind of stepping outside of my comfort zone and do something I really haven't done before, and that's shooting this expired film and getting back into 35 millimeter film after so long. No idea any of these are gonna turn out. The general rule of thumb for color negative film is to rate it one stop slower for every decade since it's expired. This film is 15 years old, and I should compensate my exposure by about one and a half stops slower to get an accurate exposure. There is this really cool sense of dramatic buildup when you kind of take your reading, implement the settings onto the physical camera, and then reload the next shot only to take the next shutter, and I'll see kind of where everything lands when I get them developed. Now because of the nature of this little experiment, I'm going to be taking three exposures of the same frame. Because I really don't know specifically how the expired film is going to react to the light. My first shot will be underexposed by two stops, my second exposed properly, and my third will be overexposed by two stops to see how the film reacts to my metered settings. We'll switch to the uh, 85. This is the last one. So I blasted through those 24 exposures pretty quickly kind of doing this test. So right now I know I'm at the end because my, uh, my, my film crank won't, won't allow me to crank anymore. So the next step really is to rewind the film. So there's a little button down here which I have to press, lift up this knob, and then just gotta rewind it. There's a bit of tension when I'm rewinding so I can tell that the camera film is still passing back through the camera. And when that tension gives up is when I know the film is rewound. All right, tension is up, so I'm pretty sure the film is rewound. So when I pop this gate, there should hopefully be no film passing through here if I rewound it properly. So it's a little scary. Ready? One, two, three. Ah, yes, no film. Fully rewound, so. Got the little canister here. Oh, I haven't done this in like 15 years, it's crazy. I just gotta write the speed and all the information on there and the uh, development guy should be able to know what to do with the rest of it. The development lab doesn't open until Monday, so I've got a, a good 24 hours, 48 hours before I know how everything turned out. Well, that was fun though. At one point, you couldn't go 100 feet in a city and not find a place to develop your film. Today, it's a bit different. Luckily, there is a place in Toronto that does same-day developing, and it's just outside my regular walk to work. Okay, it's in a completely different direction, but it's still walkable. This is Downtown Camera the place in this city to get your film developed 
or so I'm told. Now it's a super cool camera store, and not only is it a place to develop my film, but it's got this cool wall of cameras. And it even has a little mini vintage market with some possible buying options. Now I did pick up a roll of color slide film for a later project. I've got my parents' old slide projector, and if you've ever seen 35mm projected onto a big screen surface, let me just say that it's a completely different way to experience photography. But that's a whole different video. Let's take a look at the final results. Now I am happy to say that I didn't completely waste my time. Quite the opposite, actually. This whole creative experiment has taught me a lot, and nothing excites me more than a good old-fashioned learning opportunity. The entire process is an adventure in itself, rediscovering my love for manual 35mm photography, seeing for myself how the expired film reacts to the various camera settings, and I think most of all, it's experiencing that delayed gratification you get by not being able to see the results of your photos right away. And when you do get a chance to see your work, there always seems to be surprises, like how the colors of your exposure can change based on your aperture settings or a light leak that fits in perfectly. Whatever it is, it's never boring. Now how the expired film itself performed gave me confidence to break away from this testing phase of photography into something more inspired. And I think I can really take what I learned on this shoot and build upon that. Now I enjoyed shooting the first roll so much that I actually went out and shot a second roll that evening. The results are pretty cool. You will notice one characteristic on this roll that was missing from the first. These little light leak flares down here. Now these really aren't the result of the expired film. I actually have an explanation for those. To put it simply, I screwed up. Check this out. Fired off 24 uh, additional exposures, rewound the film. Thought the film was rewound. It wasn't. So opening that gate flooded the light sensitive film with way more photons than it could handle. One frame was completely ruined, and the rest of them had this kind of cool sprocket-shaped light leak frame around the edges. Again, a learning experience. As for me, I've still got a lot to learn when it comes to shooting 35mm film, but this whole experience has totally inspired me, and I am absolutely hooked. And honestly, this has been one of my favorite videos to produce because of it. Now before I go, quick question. Have you ever shot film before? Do you plan on ever shooting film? Or do you have absolutely zero interest in film altogether? I'd love to know your thoughts on that. So leave a comment down below if you have anything to add. As for me, I am really excited to shoot this slide film because this is so much fun. Thanks so much for watching guys.